Kia has been on a roll, changing its brand image with models like the luxurious K900 and the sporty Stinger. Now it's time to bring some of that DNE down market to the brand's compact sedan, the Forte. I'm Jared here with CarBuzz.com, and today I am on the first drive event here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for the all new 2019 Kia Forte. As we can see already, just from looking at this car on the outside, it bears a striking resemblance to the sporty Kia. Although, I don't want to get too crazy and buy Kia's words. I do see a lot of Stinger DNA in the taillights. You have that connected rear taillight design that was clearly influenced by the Stinger. You've got those sporty looking 17 inch wheels on this model. I've been driving around the EX Launch Edition, which is the priciest of all of the Forte models, although still pretty affordable as I'll tell you later. And then up front, we can clearly see some Stinger DNA. It has the new Kia corporate grill that was first seen on the Stinger and is now on most of Kia's models, if not all of them. I think this is a really, really handsome car. I'll try and show you with the lights on. I think it looks even better with the DRLs turned on. And the big story here is value. I think that this car is gonna be a great value for a lot of people. Kia says that a lot of first time buyers are gonna be looking at this Forte and I do not blame them. So under the hood sits a two liter four cylinder engine with 147 horsepower and 132 foot pounds of torque. Those aren't in crazy insane numbers, but again, this is not a class of really, really sporty vehicles, so that's not too bad. Uh, with 147 horsepower, you're gonna get excellent, excellent gas mileage, 31 MPG in the city, 41 MPG on the highway, and around 35 combined. I've been driving like a bit of a lunatic, but I've still averaged about 31 MPG on this drive. There's also a manual option, only on the base model, unfortunately. So if you uh, like to have a lot of options and row your own gears, you're gonna have to settle for the base FE with the manual transmission that starts at around $17,690. You can get a manual. It's gonna hurt your fuel economy. You'll only get 27 in the city, 37 on the highway, and around 31 combined. This model that we have here is the new CVT. Now this is the first ever CVT used in a Hyundai Kia product. It was developed in-house. I'm gonna talk a little bit about it later when I go out and drive this car. A lot of people are gonna bemoan the fact that they got rid of the six speed and went for a CVT, but I think this is one of the best CVTs I have ever driven and I do mean that. All right, so now I'm gonna step on the inside where the it's pretty spacious on the inside. This is 80 millimeters longer than the outgoing Forte. It's also wider as well. The interior is really, really nice on this car. Uh, like I said, we have the EXL trim is what we've been driving, which is EX Launch Edition. This one's a little bit different than the production Launch Edition that you'll be able to buy. There are different wheels. Uh, the, it'll be basically these same wheels, although they'll be in gray. And the only color on the Launch Edition is gonna be orange. And there's a couple features I'll talk about that are key on this Launch Edition. And even fully loaded as we have it here, it's only gonna be $25,200, which is pretty good considering all of the standard kit that you get. So now I'm gonna come in and step inside where a lot of that Stinger DNA carries over. This screen looks very, very familiar to anybody who's been in a Stinger recently. Down here we have dual zone automatic climate control standard on every single Forte model. That is fantastic. We have a keyless entry. I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. Unfortunately, that's only available on a couple of the high trim models. They do not make that a standard option, which is a bit unfortunate. I wish that they would uh, maybe make that more of, you know, towards the base models. Unfortunately, not all of the models have that. We do have these nice, clear, concise black with white gauges. Uh, you have a little helper screen here. You can have your fuel economy, your map information. We do have built-in navigation here on this top trim, but even if you don't get it, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard. We have some of our driver assistance functions. This car is pretty darn loaded when it comes to safety features. Kia says that all 
uh, Fortes are going to come standard with things like lane keep assist and forward collision warning. We have blind spot monitoring as well. We also have active lane keep assist. So if you take your hands off the wheel, you can start to see it moving by itself, although it will beep and tell you to put your hands back on the wheel. We also have adaptive cruise, although it does not bring you to a full stop. It shuts off at about 20 or so miles an hour. The materials in here are all pretty nice. You know, this isn't like a high, uh, a, that high of a class of car. So most of the cars in this segment don't have super luxurious materials, but Kia does an amazing job of making these cheap materials look and feel pretty good. There are a couple of hard touch plastic zones, but this is softer. Uh, down here is pretty soft as well. There are plenty of soft touch zones. The steering wheel is this nice, I doubt that it's real leather, but it feels like it really nice. These uh, leather seats that we have actually aren't real leather they're man-made but they're really really nice and if you go for anything above the XE trim or EX trim excuse me you will get ventilated seats as well as heated seats that is one of the only cars in this entire segment that has that and they do work a treat on a hot day I think the Volkswagen Jetta may be the only other car in this segment that even offers those so fantastic on Kia for offering that as an available feature on this car. We also have the key wireless charging over here. If you have a phone that'll accept that and there's plenty of storage space, you also have a lower storage area here. So on a small car like this to have that much storage to put your keys and your phone and other stuff is absolutely great. I love how Kia utilizes the space here. There's also a sunroof on this car. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about the pricing. For that, I'm going to get out of the car, and I'm going to take a moment just to show you the key fob here. Uh, it is strikingly resembling the Stinger key, which is very, very cool. It's not circular up at the top, but it is kind of like that detonator shifter that we loved on the Stinger. Very, very cool. So now let's talk about pricing. As I mentioned a little earlier, the base FE with a manual transmission is $17,690. Very affordable for somebody buying a first car. Uh, the automatic transmission is going to run you $18,590, so about $1,000 more. The LXS trim is $19. Uh, 90 the s trim is, which I've seen a couple of them on this launch is 20,190 and then the trim that you're gonna want to look at is the EX trim I think that is the best value that is 21,990 that's gonna get you the the leatherette seats heated and ventilation you're gonna get that smart key like we have you're also gonna get a smart trunk where if you hold the key and walk up to the car with the trunk closed, it will open automatically. And then there's that EX launch tr trim, which is what we are driving here right now. That's uh, $25,200. That is the priciest, uh, although you do get adaptive cruise control, a sunroof, you get uh, LED running lights, you get that wireless charger and the built-in nav. So I would say a good way to save a little over three grand is to get that EX trim because it comes basically how I like it. But this EX launch edition is very nice as well. I'm gonna show you the back seat, which is pretty darn roomy. I haven't really had a chance to uh, use it all that much, but I am gonna sit back here and show you how it feels. Sitting behind myself, even in this small car, I have plenty of uh, knee room. I have plenty of uh, headroom as well. There is an air vent back here, which is pretty nice on a compact car like this. Now I'm gonna get out. I'll show you, I believe there's also an armrest here. It folds out and has two basic cup holders. Now I'm gonna show you the trunk, which is pretty darn big. If I can find the opening for it, there it is. You can see in there, it's pretty darn big. It does have 60 foldy, 60 40 folding rear seats, and you just pull these little tabs to get those to go down. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take it on, on the road and tell you how that two liter engine matches with that CVT transmission and whether or not this is a car that enthusiasts are going to actually want to drive.
Okay, so I was invited here to Pittsburgh to drive this Kia Forte, and I've been driving around all day, and my driving impressions overall are extremely positive of this compact sedan. Now, it's not going to blow you away with power or ride and handling or any of those sort of things. It's not really that type of car. This is much in line with a Civic or a Corolla or an Elantra, but I think that it does a lot of things better than a lot of those cars. So here are the big changes. This is an all-new car, but the big change here is this CVT automatic transmission. The old second-generation Kia Forte had a six-speed automatic, so how does that differ? Well, as I mentioned earlier, you're going to get really darn good fuel economy using this CVT. However, one of the big problems with CVTs is they moan and they groan, and they don't really feel like an automatic when you really mash the throttle. And I've driven a lot of CVTs recently that kind of fix that problem, where they kind of feel like gears when you're driving it normally, and then when you really get on it, you know, you start to feel that it's a CVT. I'm going to give it a little throttle mash here. over some rough pavement, and I promise you, it sort of just feels like the gears happen to just be really long, so when you floor it from a stop, again, this is not a very, very fast car, so it kind of just feels like it winds out, and it just kind of feels like you're going through some really long gears. I'm going to try it one more time. There you go, see? When it finally does reach the top of the RPM range, it really does sound like it's simulating a gear. This is one of the best CBTs that I have driven. I am deeply impressed by it. It has seven faux gears. I've put it in its manual mode here and shifted through them that way too. And I genuinely think that this is one of the closest CVTs I've ever felt to feeling like a true automatic. So that's very good on Kia's part that they were able to do that on their first go. Good for you, Kia. I'm very proud of this transmission. There is a six-speed manual option as well. I haven't driven it. It's only available on the base trim, so I can't imagine that it's really that fun of a manual. Kia says the take rate's going to be only around 5%, so you can go ahead and try and find one of those at your local deal although to be honest this is not a very fast car and I don't think that the six-speed manual is going to add all of that much enjoyment to it. The steering is very very light. Uh, it's really easy to maneuver around tight back roads, around parking spots, all of that. I, I like the steering. It's not the most involving that I've driven but it's nowhere near uh, a snooze fest either. We had some fun roads on our route here in Pittsburgh, and you do get some genuine steering feel. I put it in sport mode. I, I think it gets a little heavier. It's kind of hard to tell. Kia has sort of done away with that whole gimmick of where the steering would get really heavy when you put it in sport mode. But yeah, I really like the steering weight. I think most people are going to be very, very happy with it. I, I could even tolerate this as an enthusiast who really likes good steering feel. I think it feels pretty darn good. Another point of contention might be the torsion beam rear suspension. So instead of having an independent rear suspension, it's just a beam across the rear axle, and you start to notice it when the roads get really crappy, and Kia must have been really confident that they built a really, really comfortable car here, because Pittsburgh has some doozies of roads that are really torn up, really terrible, big potholes, and when you go over the biggest of potholes, you start to feel the car shake and shimmy a little bit. Not too bad. It's nothing terrible. I would never complain too much about it, but you do notice it when you're over really, really rough pavement. If you live somewhere where there's smooth roads, I think the ride of this car is actually fantastic. It rides like a class above. It's a compact car car, so it competes against cars like the Civic and Elantra, but I think this rides as well as a Sonata or even an Optima or, you know, a Camry. I think it rides that well. It's very, very smooth on the highway, very quiet as well. This CVT does not really have a lot of moaning and groaning when you're at highway speeds. I really do like the way this car feels. The seats that I'm sitting in on this top trim are these leatherette. They're not real leather, but it's a nice material. I think it's fine. It, it feels very durable. And 
The good thing about it is there's a little bit of bolstering. It's nothing crazy. It's not a sport seat by any stretch of the imagination, but it holds you in nice over, over corners. And I would be happy to sit in this car for a really long period of time. And as I mentioned earlier, if you get the EX trim or above, you're going to get heated and ventilated seats, which is not the only car in this class that does that, but one of the only cars that does that. And that makes this car an incredible value. I think that this Forte represents one of the best values in this class right now. I think it looks good on the outside. I love the interior design. I love how I have all of this storage space for all of my stuff. And the way it drives is pretty good as well. So I'm in my short time with the Forte, I know I haven't had it too long. I am deeply, deeply impressed with it, and I'm going to give it a recommendation of must-buy. I think if you're looking for a compact sedan and you want something affordable that's going to give you those features to make you feel like you just bought a luxury car, this is the car for you. And if you're, you know, a 16-year-old or an 18-year-old and you're shopping for your first wheels and you have about $22,000 Oh my goodness, the amount of stuff that you're getting in this is ridiculous for a first car. So I, I would be genu genuinely happy to have this as a first car. I think it's great, and that's why it gets a recommendation of must-buy from me. And if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, subscribe to the Car Buzz Unboxing YouTube channel and be sure to follow us on all of the social media platforms, including Instagram and Twitter. And be sure to download our app on iOS and Android to keep up with all of the latest and greatest in automotive news and to read all of our reviews like the my full written review of this 2019 Kia Forte. Hope you've enjoyed the video. See you next time.